Hi, I'm Sabrina Gayle. Welcome to my kitchen. Now, Easter is coming and I know we might not be celebrating the traditional way, but there's no reason not to be traditional with what you cook and I love lamb and never need an excuse to make it. I'm going to show you how to make the most delicious twist on a classic lamb leg ready for your table. One of the best things about this recipe is just how simple it is. You won't believe how few ingredients it uses. Why? Because the one ingredient that I've chosen to be its key spice is gonna take care of absolutely everything. Rasol Hanout is your best friend when you want to deliver big flavors because it packs a punch and just what we need to make this lamb smell and taste incredible. So first things first, I'm going to start with the yogurt. Now the yogurt has two different jobs. One, it's a great tenderizer, but two, it's going to give us a base to pack with flavour and coat the outside of the lamb. And because this is lamb leg, it could do with a little bit of help from an outside coating, not only protects it, but enables the flavour to permeate through it during cooking times. So, what about 150 grams, okay two tablespoons of tomato puree, and then I've got my favorite ingredient here, which I'll talk a little bit more about later, but I'm gonna take three tablespoons of ras al hanout, good amount of salt. Lastly, I've got three garlic cloves here, and I'm just gonna go in for a fourth one. Best way to do that is just to put a little pressure till you hear a crack, the tougher end. Just cut that off with a knife. And then it just comes off so easily and cleanly and you've got your garlic peeled there. Don't forget for the full recipe, the link is in the description. One last one. Lovely. I'm gonna give a little swig of oil, just a tiny bit, it's a tablespoon, not more. To give everything a good mix. Really take the time to make sure everything's evenly combined. No white bits of yogurt or lumps of unblended tomato puree. It smells really good already, to be fair. Now, onto the lamb. Sharp knife. I'm going to make three incisions into the lamb. This is just to open it up to enable more flavor to permeate into it. Get your marinade dollops. Save a little bit, because we do want to make sure all sides are coated. Listen, I'm not even gonna pretend that this is much better if you go in with your hands. That's what I'm gonna do. But if you're squeamish, you can stick to the spoon. There is no substitute for feeling marinades and really working it into the meat. Just give it a coating, because you're gonna eat every part of the lamb, so you want to make sure every part, including the underside, gets a basic coating. I concentrate the main part of the marinade on top because that's going to be the exposed side. Okay, make sure you really wedge your fingers and get the marinade into those incisions. Happy days, I'm going to wash my hands now. And now all we're going to do is take the lamb, pop it in the oven for 90 minutes. Right. Now, whilst the lamb is in the oven, I wanna tell you about this incredible ingredient. This is Ras Al Hanout. It literally translated means head of the shop. So I'm just going to show you. Have a look at this, Paul. It's got rose petals, it's got whole coriander seeds, whole cumin seeds, and then also ground spices. It really, really is fragrant and a fantastic quick flavor hit. If you need to add something to things like butternut squash and root vegetables, sweet potatoes, it's really a fantastic pairing. It's got a little bit of a kick, I'm not gonna lie, but that when harnessed properly and used with the right ingredients is absolutely fantastic, which is why this is my choice as the perfect pairing for this lamb today. The lamb has been in an oven for 90 minutes and it's lovely and burnished. Thing is, if I leave it uncovered in the oven, it's going to continue burnishing and getting a little bit burnt. So all we're going to do is now we've sort of sealed that flavor and color onto it. I'm just gonna take some tin foil, wrap it and cover it, pop it back in the oven. For the remaining cooking time, that's about two and a half hours. 
So the lamb has been in the oven for the full four hours and it's just rested, covered in foil for half an hour. This just allows for all the juices that have been bubbling up during cooking to seep right back through the meat, keeping it lovely and tender. Either side is where you want to start cutting because that's the fatter end of the lamb leg. I like to serve this with traditional accompaniments sometimes, or quite frankly, a bit of rice, potatoes, whatever is your bag. Another perfect pairing for this lamb would be a recipe I've already done with Waitrose for a roasted butternut squash, and you can find that recipe in the video description. Here you have it, my incredible slow roast leg of lamb. A little twist on the traditional, absolutely perfect for Easter.